Hi, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us today at Open Minds First Privacy Conference. My name is Karthik Chopra, and today I will be talking to you about secure machine learning practices in the national security sector as the organizations are adopting privacy preserving machine learning technologies. We will talk about specific use cases, methods, the design of a team, and the approaches that are working inside of these organizations to preserve the privacy of classified and very sensitive data sources. A little bit about myself. My name is Kartik, and I'm a former intelligence officer with almost a decade in national security. Most of my experience has been in deploying multimodal systems to include image, text, audio, and speech in various different parts of the world and environments that allow us to generate better insights about information overseas. A lot of my work has been also to include advising early stage startups and building machine learning teams that incorporate product managers, software engineers, machine learning engineers, and machine learning researchers. The problem in the space for many, many years has been the leaks that the US government has seen on how cybersecurity is being attacked given the kind of data sets that have leaked to the public. Specifically, the breaches inside the Office of Personal Management, the Snowden leaks, and various insider threat scenarios have shaken up the industry on how do we conduct not only data and code governance, but also model governance inside of these organizations. The OPM breach specifically was a breach that leaked access to various sensitive information of US government staffers and specific PII that was contained in centralized data leaks. The Snowden leaks included various sources and methods that were perceived to be believed by and, and, and intercepted by the US government. An insider threat where various data governance procedures and methods were attacked to then retrieve vital classified information by a specific user published in the open internet. To solve and overcome these problems, various organizations are investing billions of dollars in artificial intelligence from the defense and the intelligence communities. Strategic investments are being made in multi-intelligence data platforms that include image, text, audio, speech, geolocation, and various other types of intelligence. And these systems and their distributed natures create very advanced environments for engineers to adapt and build towards. And as these investments are being made in these communities, we are opening our eyes to how do we continue to preserve the privacy of the types of the sensitive information that we're building these systems on. What this is allowing us to do is that it's enabling us to, for cross-organizational knowledge transfer, where decades ago, things were done on manual labor, where now the due to the cloud and on-prem environments, a lot of these organizations are able to communicate through centralized data systems. The reason why we are talking about this now and various specific investments are being made in data privacy is that we are realizing the kind of environment that the US government deals and works in is that software engineers are building technologies where privacy needs to be preserved at all times. 
which means that given an environment where all the data you are working with is classified, top secret, secret, and various different kinds of classifications and compartmentalizations, how do we preserve the privacy of these data sets while also adopting to the various new techniques of artificial intelligence to keep up with research? The first step to start a foundational effort in these approaches is to have a team. There's various parts of an engineering team. And what we'll be discussing here is in that approaches that have worked inside US government organizations where the engineers, product managers, UI UX, business development, and customer discovery officers have been able to understand how specific classified data sources need to be handled, how are specific human intelligence, signals intelligence, and geolocation intelligence data is being commingled, and while the commingling is happening, also leaking various sensitivity of the underlying data sets. To start with engineers, engineers are often being involved in customer discovery and design and framing meetings where we ad work with the operators and better understand how the data is being accessed at the edge and then transmit it into an ecosystem where a lot of the analysis needs to happen. The engineers this way adapt to technologies and build cybersecurity systems that are not only robust when it comes to security, but also preserve the privacy of the data that is underlying in these systems. Because of the emerging nature of these technologies, various product managers have traits that enable them to translate classified requirements in very non-sensitive environments. What I mean there is that the ability to work with an engineering team that has the government clearance to learn about specific nuances of that classified data, a product manager translates those requirements to perhaps then an engineering team that doesn't have the government clearance, but needs to decouple the classified data sources and the classified sources and methods to how the product or the engineering sorry, the machine learning models need to adapt to that new ecosystem. Likewise, with the UI UX teams, user experience for how the operators are deploying this AI technology needs to be translated back to the engineering teams and the product managers, which continues to enable the team at large on how to build a privacy-preserving system. And likewise for business development, which in the government space are individuals that are finding more use cases, they are the at the forefront of pitching and better understanding how secure machine learning systems need to be built in various different US government environments, which means the underlying understanding of privacy preserving technologies to include distributed machine learning, to include differential privacy, need to be translated to executives in a way that solves a solution that that US government entity is trying to build towards. One example to start these initiatives is to begin with an open mind. And what that means is that allowing government organizations and engineers and data science teams to learn more about technologies that are built by open mind allows data science and software engineering teams to get quickly started with privacy-preserving machine learning technologies. 
And organizations, as they're learning more about the research and the software stack that is being published by OpenMind, has now started to prove out specific use cases for how government organizations can conduct privacy-preserving machine learnings in a national security environment. For example, what we have here is a three multi-party federated learning system that helps the USA Jobs website to better classify resumes as applicants are applying to work in these three specific government organizations as civilians. So the goal here is that as candidates are applying to be a civilian at the Army, at the Air Force, or at the US Navy, candidates' resumes and the privacy of that candidate needs to be preserved as their resumes are going through the recruitment process. The goal for USA Jobs is to build a classifier that better understands the traits of a US Army applicant, a US Navy applicant, and a US Air Force applicant without sharing the data from all the three different parties. And what PyGrid and PySIFT can allow engineers in these ecosystems to start with early on is a architecture that allows the three organizations to train a machine learning model on applicants' data in their own environments, but to only share the insights and the model feedback and parameters to the USA Jobs, where many civilians apply to begin with. A traditional process currently is, is that USA Jobs takes in a civilian's applicant application or a resume and then communicates asynchronously to US Army, to the Air Force and the Navy to better understand how that applicant is suited for three parties or just one organization. Having a system that better assists, assists recruitment officers to hire individuals that are well-rounded for all three of these organizations as civilians allows USA Jobs to create a machine learning classifier that is distributedly learning from the three data sets residing in these three organizations while building a better classifier at the edge where the applicants are applying on the USA Jobs website. And using Open Minds technologies, a proof of concept has been able to show how specific use cases like this can prove to the organizations that without the ability to share the data, they were still able to generate insights and create a classifier that will assist an organization to better learn about applicants coming in and make decisions at the edge. What I would love to open now for is a question and answering. And I thank you for everyone for being here. And I hope everyone is healthy and safe. Thank you very much.